Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, another entry here based on your suggestions. This one also a past suggestion. And I loved this one because in particular, it continues my recent theme, I guess, of these weird kooky aliens from the 1950s films. But also because I just happened to see Mars Attacks yet again in theaters. It was a one night special event type deal here in Austin where they have some kind of Tim Burton marathon going on there. I love that movie, absolutely loved it when it first came out in theaters, and so it was a great blast from the past to be able to see it again. And in this particular suggestion, it perfectly ties into it, and you'll realize what I mean here in a few minutes based on how this thing looks in particular, then, um, then you'll see that uh, similarity as well. Not exactly, but still, it, it is pretty, pretty close. So this suggestion has to do with a weird, strange encounter that occurred in 1971, to be exact. And it has to do with a humanoid-like creature called the Canula Humanoid, which you're looking at a picture of here. Now instantly you can see why I compare it in some ways to the Mars Attacks aliens because in this case, this thing, whatever it was, it's wearing a greenish type suit of some sort. Uh, obviously the helmet covers everything. Well in Mars Attacks they didn't have uh, that kind of covered helmet. Instead it was glass and you could see everything inside. But the rest of it... I mean, it almost like pays homage to it when it comes to the suit itself. So uh, this encounter, again, it occurred in 1971. So here's all the details with it. So there's two specific encounters. One happened on February 2nd uh, with regards to two ladies. And then the other one was on February 5th. Let's talk about the first one. So you have to go to a location in Finland. It's called... Uh, Oulu, I hope I'm saying that right, Oulu, it's a region near a place called Kiminki, and at approximately 8 p.m., there were these two women, um, let's see if I can say his name right, Sinika Koitinen, and then another one named Mrs. Maninen, there were two Finnish women that were driving, I guess, straight towards their home, and then that's when, I guess, just during this usual casual drive, they noticed a light of some sort behind their car. A very strange light, in other words. Nothing like, uh, let's say, starlight or nothing like other car lights or anything like that. No, this definitely stood out. And then what made it, of course, a whole other different level was the fact that this light suddenly started to go with their car. So it was actually following them. You can easily tell when that happens, too, because if you're driving and you see, let's say, starlights behind you, clearly they'll just move left or right depending on where you're turning but when you see a light stay unanimous with your car that suddenly seems different obviously that's like a uh, scary type of sense because you know that something then is following you so sure enough this thing started to pace their car I don't know if they were exactly at that point getting a little freaked out but it got so close that it actually passed their car and when that happened uh, one of the ladies Seneca stated that their ears plugged up the closest that I could come up with is like if let's say you're on a flight and whenever it's either ascending or descending either coming to or from let's say a landing there's always that sensation that the ears plug up so I imagine that that's what this thing did to them as well so this light whatever it was now that they saw that it was a UFO st still started to follow them but then Whenever that happened, they decided that they uh, were going to head up to a certain place. I guess it was a region, so that way they could try to get closer to uh, any place that had like a city or closer to a place that had people. But before that could occur, what happened next truly absolutely scared them. That's when they saw a strange helmeted creature approximately three feet tall somewhere up front in their road though so the way I read it was they must have seen it at a distance as they were driving down the road like their headlights must have caught this thing and in those few seconds they saw this creature whatever it was basically cross across the road and it did so in a weird series of small 
jumps. Now keep that in mind because it'll come into play with the next encounter too. So imagine this thing, the way it looks, making a small series of, I guess, time jumps, speedy jumps, whatever they were, it bounded across the road and then the way they described it is it swiftly disappeared on the other side of the road based on what they knew about the area in that location they realized that where it was heading was completely desolated so there was no set of houses there were no set of buildings filled with people no wherever this thing was and wherever it was heading it was definitely heading to a place that was empty of civilization so wisely these women decided you know they're not going to play around with this anymore they sped as quickly as they could toward that city the one that they were heading to try to get away from the UFO it seemed like this UFO uh, at that point decided maybe they weren't really too interested in the women because that's when this thing just basically disappeared the way they described it was it just um uh, the light almost like went out like it either just flew away really really quickly or turned in a completely different direction but either way um, they the UFO wasn't interested in them and then the women in turn obviously smartly were not interested in them as well so that was their encounter not necessarily something too bad but here's the next one where things take a different turn so February 5th 1971 three days later after what encountered with these ladies uh, there was a set uh, another pair of humans in this case two males two lumberjacks one by the name of Peter Alaranta then the other one by the name of Esco Juhani Snek uh, so they were there working their job which consisted of trimming trees and then I guess clearing some of the f uh, parts of the forest I guess for the wood and it was about 3 p.m. the way they described it when they decided that they wanted to take a break like they were it was time to head home they had done everything that they had to do for the day and so they decided then in a short period they were going to be wrapping up well one of the pair of the two was in that process of doing so but that's when he saw this guy um, Alarante he saw something in the distance that he had not seen before maybe this thing was already there hovering for a good while and he just hadn't noticed it because they were so busy I guess doing their work but as soon as he did uh, he did pay attention to it that's what he saw he saw this thing a UFO of some sort, almost shaped like the way he described it, two saucers, one on top of the other, about 15 feet in diameter, and there it was, right at treetop level. So keep that in mind when it comes to that distance. That means that this thing was pretty close by if you're at treetop level. So it's not way up in the sky, but at the same time it's not right there on the ground, but it's still definitely within a close distance and this thing whatever it was suddenly decided that it was going to land near their area it was about 50 feet away in fact so the way he just continues the description is there it slowly started descending then four landing legs of some sort all of them with small round bases came out these were about six feet long in total and if there was any kind of sound that this UFO was making, this guy Alarante did not know because, ironically, his co-partner, his co-worker, this guy Snick, was still working. So he was completely oblivious. Maybe his back was turned to everything that was happening, but he was completely oblivious to what was going on. And there he was, still trimming all those trees in the process. The other guy, though, Alarante, his face must have been just pure shock just staring at what was happening in the background as this thing this UFO was almost to the ground that's when some kind of opening came out from the bottom the way he described it was a circular portal opened right there by the base and that's when yet again this thing whatever it was this Kunali humanoid descended and the way he stated it was it was also it was a uh, an entity of some sort that was within that green like suit it slowly descended towards the bottom but it seemed to be floating towards the bottom it was nothing in terms of let's say a ladder or nothing in terms of of, of whatever the closest equivalent of a rope is now in this case it slowly floated down towards the bottom he got a really good look at it though he also described it as being three feet in height its entire body had this one piece suit uh, that was 
which I guess closest thing was a light green of some sort. And also, in this case, he was able to see the face. There was no face because only there was a mask, like a, uh, like a faceplate of some sort. I guess uh, like one of those metal masks that you see those divers take whenever they have to go to the bottom of the sea like the old movies used to show. So the way he described it was it was akin to a scuba diver type mask where there was a glass like faceplate of some sort but that was it. There was no other discernible feature about it. And then also the uh, the arms and the legs were there, but there was nothing uh, indicating that there were hands or there were fingers. So maybe it was just like one round ball of some sort in terms of the la the final part of the arms and the appendages to it. And this thing, whenever it landed on the ground, what was interesting to note is that their area there in Finland, there was a lot of snow at that time. This thing landed on it, but it did not descend upon the snow like it did not let's say uh, go into the snow itself so you know how when you're walking in snow or even if it light snow your feet will crush the snow and then hit the ground underneath it so you're leaving these footprints this thing did not though this thing whatever it was it seemed to have been much lighter in air because when it descended on the snow and it began walking it was creating no sense of, of let's say footprints nothing along those lines so that's also very very interesting to know now remember how I was mentioning that that the alien in the other encounter with the ladies, the way it was moving was it was bounding across in these short, small jumps. Well, guess what? This thing also was doing the very same th uh, thing as well. So this canoely humanoid, it turned actually straight towards that guy. Uh, towards Alarante and then it began going towards him. There was no sense though if this was anything as far as a harmful attack or if this was just out of curiosity but this thing once it saw Alarante then that's when it slowly started doing those jumps towards him. The way he described it was it was almost as if it was moving in a robotic motion short stiff gliding moments is how he stated it almost as if he was watching an astronaut on the moon you know how they have to do those little jumps whenever it comes to getting from one place to another that's the closest that he could describe it by the way there's also speculation that the reason why this thing this canoe humanoid was wearing the suit and how it was able to almost float and create no pressure on the ground is because it itself may be experiencing um, a weird sense of pressure here on earth so you know how humans have to wear those special suits whenever they go deep underwater in order to make sure that the pressure doesn't instantly crush them like a can of coke no and th it seems like this is might be the same case with the canoely humanoid where our air pressure might be lethal to this thing and so that's why it had that particular suit on it. In any case back to what was happening to Alorante this thing was getting closer to it and then that's when the other guy Snek noticed it as well um, and they both turned. Here's where things take a little bit of a weird I guess angle. Um, I don't know if this is more fanciful or if this is revised history of some sort, but the way that Alarante stated next was he had a stroke of, let's say, fearfulness and he decided that he was going to chase this thing head on like straight using his chainsaw using it almost as a weapon uh, so he started his chainsaw he with a roar I guess he started running straight towards this thing that was galloping toward them and then that's when the alien this uh, whoever it was decided that they were not going to have it so they turned back around and then they went it went back straight to the UFO and again continuing the weird angle angle, Alarante also pursued this quote-unquote little green man all the way towards the UFO. So take that with a little grain of salt. <clears throat> I don't really hear too many stories about that. You would think common sense is that if you see something like this that that you're not going to necessarily uh, I guess go all Rambo on them but no in this case Alarante absolutely uh, was able was doing this he chased this little green man all the way to the UFO that jumped and it floated up towards that portal that was open and then again continuing this action diehard type sense um, Alarante then jumped up after it 
caught this alien by its boot, the closest thing, the equivalent of what it had to a boot, with his own bare hand. And then that's the when he stated that he couldn't hold on to it anymore because immediately there was a sharp flash of pain, almost as if something within that boot or the suit of the alien created like a really, really hot temperature, like a hot iron. So much so that immediately he leapt backwards and then he landed back on the ground and then that was it the alien went straight into this uh, saucer but with enough time for all I wanted to realize that there was other aliens also viewable within I guess some some port of some sort it disappeared straight up into the uh, sky with a soft buzzing sound and then that was it um, even after it left though these two stated that they were unable like they had some kind of weird side effects afterward like they were unable to talk I guess unable to form words of some sort and that they themselves had difficulty I guess moving around so whatever the cause of being near either the alien or the UFO or both was it was creating some kind of weird physical effects upon them unfortunately they didn't have any proof about the encounter no photos no videos nothing um, other than the fact that there was some small prints on the ground not from the alien but from that saucer I guess it was heavy enough to create these prints on the bottom but of course with it being snow um, all it takes is uh, less than a day and uh, maybe even by the afternoon and the snow is gone so then that was it no more history associated with it but yeah, that's all the information tied to this bizarre encounter called the uh, Kinula Humanoid there in Finland back in 1971. If anyone has any more information that they can share about it, that would be really great to hear. Nothing in terms of, let's say, other encounters elsewhere about these unique looking creatures with the Mars attack like suits. Nothing else that I could find but if anyone has any other info about other type of encounters that would be awesome to hear too but all right everybody thanks again as always take care